Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Life, Love, God podcast, the story of a soul traveler, an autobiography of Norman Paulson, who was a direct disciple of Paramahansa Yogananda. In today's episode, number 13, we're going to be covering some of the information in chapter 15, entitled Life with Yogananda. So, Norm had arrived at Mount Washington. He, he's been there in several months now. And he wrote that he hadn't had a lot of time to spend with Yogananda. And he said that on an average, he only saw the master about once a month at that time. So Norm had been busy learning a few things. Uh, 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 the Hung Sa method of meditation and... Uh, yoga asanas and uh, in this chapter you see that he's introduced to another technique but Norm's also been learning the construction trades from Bernard and has become a fair hand at plastering stuccoing and carpentry as well as performing a lot of landscaping with his fellow disciple Gene Haupt so it's interesting that what Norm learned at Mount Washington actually became his career or his means of making a living for several years after leaving the monastery. In fact, uh, Norm's friend Boone also um, uh, spent many years in the construction trades after he left Mount Washington. But one morning, um, a message was sent down to Norm from Yogananda, and he said, get dressed at once, I'm taking you with me today. So Norm was excited because he was going to accompany uh, his guru on a trip. So Yogananda had been gifted a used Cadillac sedan for his birthday by a friend. And y when Yogananda approached Norm, he said, Big boy, are you a good driver? You have good karma, so I won't have to worry about accidents. And, and that day, Norm did a, a, a good job, and as a result, he was called upon more often for various occasions to drive master around the city. And here you see a picture of Yogananda standing in front of uh, a, a, the old classic car. So Yogananda during this time purchased a retreat in 29 Palms Desert area. Um, part of the reason for that is the Encinitas retreat, the main house had been destroyed as the cliff collapsed. Um, and so they lost a uh, uh, the temple and most of the uh, Yogananda's retreat there. So um, what they bought was a three bedroom house on an acre of land in 29 Palms. And at the same time, he purchased a retreat for the monks, uh, the men about three miles away. And Yogananda spent much of the time during the last few years of his life writing at the retreat in 29 Palms, where he finished the two volume set, God Talks with Arjuna, uh, the Bhagavad Gita. So one day, Bernard called Norm saying, Master's at the desert retreat and he wants you, Boone, Bill Brown, and me to go out there. It seems that he has some work for us to do. So they hop in a pickup and it, in those days, uh, there weren't all the laws about seat belts and safety. So um, Norm and Boone rode in the back of a pickup truck. Uh, all the way out to the desert and Norm described the desert having seen it for the first time he said I'd never really seen a desert before the terrain became fascinating the colors were incredibly beautiful Joshua trees and yucca plants decorated the rock and sand strewn landscape one could see 30 or 40 miles across this unobstructed land it reminded me of the ocean the stars at night were so bright and clear. I felt like I could reach out and touch them. The desert was this strange and new environment calling to me. Someday I might like to live out here. The silence was so profound one could hear the all-pervading sound of Om constantly. And you see a little foreshadowing here of when Yogananda would leave, excuse me, when Norm would leave Mount Washington and would end up in uh, the desert 
uh, for a number of years uh, working construction and being involved with uh, uh, George Van Tassel and his uh, search for uh, uh, UFOs and also uh, helping with the progress in building uh, what uh, Van Tassel called the Integratron. So the work Yogananda wanted done on this trip consisted of erecting a snake-proof fence around the one-acre retreat. So they'd been learning how to work with concrete block and mortar and it looks like when you see this picture on the bottom that they build a block and mortar uh, fence all the way around the property to keep the rattlesnakes out so that people could walk around the property without fear of, of snakes. So in 19, this is 1948, it was the fall of the same year when I first saw our next new brother arriving. Sitting in the Hollywood church after one of Yogananda's Sunday lectures, I spotted this fellow in a white Panama suit, a white shirt and black tie. He was noticeably agitated, having traveled many miles to see Yogananda, only to find out that he needed a prior appointment. The same thing that happened to Norm when he arrived at, at the Hollywood church. I knew at first glance he was going to join us, but where was he from, dressed in that white suit? The new recruit approached and he spoke to Norm. You are one of Paramahansa Yogananda's disciples, are you not? And uh, Norman uh, said yes. Well, my name is Donald Walters, and he has just consented to accept me as one of his disciples. So Donald we know today as Swami Kriyananda. But uh, Norm wrote, he said, I liked Don right from the beginning. He had a sincere heart and I knew that would bring him through. So there were some amazing disciples coming to Mount Washington at this particular time. And I want to talk about a story that ties in here. So you see, in 1948, Yogananda had what was, has been referred to as the Great Samadhi of 1948, which was witnessed by nearly all of his disciples who were at Mount Washington when this occurred. It was June in 1948 and Rinalini Mata, who would follow Daya Mata as SRF president, describes that particular evening. She said that experience that started in the evening, he called, he called some of us mentally. I was in the office at the time and suddenly I had the feeling like I had to go to master's room. The door was open. He motioned to come in. In fact, her sister, Diamata, had come in earlier and she described the feeling. She said, I walked into the room. It felt like I was walking into God. So anyway, Rinalini walked into the room and she says, I could see immediately that he was very withdrawn. His face, his eyes, his expression. We had seen that on occasion when he would go into a samadhi and one by one different of the disciples were called mentally almost and I think most of us were. He went into his room on the chair that was there in his sitting room now that was in his bedroom at the time and he called us all in there and we sat on the floor and he said to us I don't know what's happening to me Divine Mother is calling me within I don't know if she wants I don't know if she's going to take me from this body. And so he sat on his chair and then he went into this deep state of samadhi that lasted all night long. He talked to Divine Mother, just an unending flow of conversation all night long. But he said to us afterwards, and we saw during that samadhi, that Divine Mother did something unique for those of us who were present in the room. She used his voice to respond so that we were hearing a two-way conversation. So when Master would speak, it was his voice. When Divine Mother spoke, it was a different tone of voice. And this went on all night long until about 9 or 10 the next morning. So why did I tell you this story? Because later Yogananda wrote, In the vision I had in 1948, Divine Mother said to me, In the early years I sent you a few bad ones to test your love for me. Now I'm sending you angels. And whoever smites them, I will smite. So here was Divine Mother promising that she was sending him some of his best disciples at this point and that she was going to protect them. And there were a number of new disciples that came in the, in the 1940s. 
Um, the name slips my mind, but there was one that <clears throat> that came that helped um, Oliver Black in Michigan to set up to set up the Brotherhood Colony at Song of the Morning. Um, there was Roy Eugene Davies, who was one of the youngest teachers in SRF at the time, was made one of the youngest teachers in SRF at the time. Um, he later veered off the path, but um, not before he wrote many books and um, initiated many into Kriya Yoga. But two of those angels that Divine Mother spoke of were Norman Paulson, who arrived in 47, and Donald Walters, who arrived in 48. Both those disciples went on to create successful World Brotherhood colonies. They published Yogananda's teachings. Uh, they wrote their own autobiographies, and they initiated hundreds into Kriya Yoga meditation. Norm wrote at this time, Yogananda taught me a series of energization exercises. He insisted from the day of my coming that I also learn the yoga postures, directing both Boone and Bernard to teach me. So you see in these pictures, you see Yogananda um, is basically supervising Norm in an energization exercise. And in the bottom picture, you see Yogananda at the Encinitas retreat um, having three of his people, and it looks like that is Norm, Brother Bernard, and probably Boone, um, demonstrating for some guests the different yoga asanas. So Norm, ex Norm knew that the energization exercises were a form of pranayama, life force control, and that they provided a means to oxygenate, recharge the cells of the body and mind, rid the body of toxins, and prepare you for sitting meditation. So he started there, but Norm said a year later he could perform 84 asanas. And I realized that they were a benefit for developing deeper awareness of my body, mind, and character. They also helped me to sit more comfortably in meditation. Now there's an event that is almost slightly comical, uh, but also a nail biter that happens in this chapter. Norm had found a Mack truck, a five-ton Mack truck, and he talked Yogananda into buying it because they needed something big to haul trash and building materials to and from Mount Washington. And so one morning, Norm and James Butler, who was also known as Bugs, left Mount Washington in the truck to obtain some lumber. And while they were driving down the steep grade uh, into basically the Highland Park area, the brake stopped working. So to give you an idea of that grade, for those of you that have been to Sunburst Sanctuary, there's a large hill that descends from Highway 1 down into 101. Um, that's only a 7% grade. Um, this is almost three times steeper. So anyway, the brakes stopped working in this huge, heavy truck, five-ton truck. And Norm found himself suddenly, you no, know, he was looking around going, where I can either go off the cliff, I can ram it into a car, I can ram into a house, we're, we're going to be hurt in any way. And suddenly Norm found himself on the floor of the truck, under the steering wheel, hand pumping the brake as hard as he could. And after about 20 or 30 pumps, the brakes began to hold. So Norm, with all his strength, slammed down on the brake pedal and brought the truck to a stop. Now later on he had the truck checked out, they couldn't find anything wrong with the brakes. Norm had worked on cars before. He probably understood hydraulic braking systems, but he didn't have time to rationalize what was going on here. He just jumped underneath the steering wheel and just started pumping away on that brake pedal. Norm later described this this way. He said the greatest part of it was the realization that my unseen companions, my guardian angels, and I'm going to add Divine Mother, were able to take control of my body and make it do what I hadn't thought of doing myself. You see, here's the promise. Some of my best ones I'm going to send you now, and I'm going to watch over them. This was Divine Mother watching over Norm and James Butler to make sure that nothing happened to them. So I hope you enjoy this chapter. I would really encourage you to go back and read the Runaway Truck episode. and. Um, 
and in it you'll realize that um, Bugs or James Butler decided that he was never going to be in a vehicle with Norm again. <laughs> so uh, please order your own copy of Life Love God. Uh, you can get it off the Sunburst website or off the Amazon website. Uh, please subscribe to the Sunburst Sanctuary YouTube channel. If you don't subscribe, you won't be notified when new um, podcasts or new meditations uh, show up. And please leave comments on our podcasts, particularly if they're positive. We really like that. And tell your friends about the Sunburst YouTube channel. To prepare for next week, excuse me, for next month, I would like you to read chapter 16, Kriya Yoga Initiation. Until then, may spirit be with you all. Thank you.